Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to help share some tips and advice within their industry that hopefully you feel uh, or find that is very helpful. And today I have Mike Cattuccio and he is a health reform expert. And Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Yep, yep. So um, why don't you explain to the viewers a little bit about yourself? Okay. Uh, my name is Mike Tuccio. I work for Whitehurst Strategic Partners in the Triangle. We're an employee benefits firm and a risk management firm. And so in the employee benefits department, I work with companies on their health benefits and the effects of the healthcare reform exchange. Okay. So do you work with like maybe just restaurants only or, or who, who do you work with? Well, we work with, again, all companies, large and small. It's uh, We just find that the uh, human resource department person may also be the office manager, which could also be the vice president or the owner. And they wear several hats today. And our, our job is to kind of blend together human resource management and employee benefits management and uh, helping them walk through that and make the best out of that situation. Okay. Being that you're the expert in this, in this field, hopefully you can uh, answer some questions and concerns that I have. And the first one I have is, I heard that um, health care reform has been delayed until 2015. Is this true? No, it's absolutely not true. And I hear this just about every day. Uh, there was one piece of the health care reform that was delayed, and that was what's affectionately called the pay or play penalty. And that was just for companies that had an average of 50 more employees, and there would be a penalty they would pay in 2014 if they did not offer affordable benefits. Um, the delay was just for them. And uh, one thing that companies need to be careful of is that the delay is only until January in 2015. So if your plan renews in 2014, let's say July, you don't get July until 2015 to make that change. You have to have that change made by December 30th of 2014. And so, um, there are still things to do in that arena with that pay or play issue in order to make sure groups are compliant. Well, I certainly can see how it can get confusing and why it's so important to talk to someone like yourself. Yeah, we recommend that every company have a one-on-one -on -one session with their agency. There's uh, other compliance issues uh, been enacted since March of 2010 of compliance paperwork that needs to be distributed to the employees. There's HIPAA paperwork, COBRA paperwork. There's notice of the exchange, uh, the individual exchange that needs to go out to all employees by October 1, regardless of whether or not you offer a health plan to your employees. Uh, there's another piece that we have found that nine times out of 10, the employers did not know about, and that was the Nursing Mothers Act, where a nursing mom needs to have a place that she can go, a designated place, that she can express her milk and have a refrigerator for that and have break times for that. And uh, there also needs to be a written policy in place talking about those guidelines. Um, again, most employers don't know even that that plan exists, let alone be compliant. And so again, I say get, get with your agent or with an agency that does human resource compliance and healthcare reform compliance so that you can make sure that there's about nine or 10 forms that needed to be distributed to your employees, either by electronic version or by first class mail. And so um, not all of them apply to all companies, but for the ones that do, they need to get those forms out. Okay, so how does healthcare reform apply to smaller companies? Well, the biggest piece with smaller companies is the individual exchange. Uh, the individual exchange may give those employees a subsidy if what you contribute to their health insurance is not deemed affordable by the government. And so we have situations where we have employees that are going to leave a plan and, um, and shrink maybe an employer's plan from 25 down to 15. And uh, employers may not want that to happen. Uh, and on the other side of the coin is a situation where maybe an employer has kind of set their budget to the 20 employees that are on their plan. They could have eight or nine employees that have been waiving for years. Those other eight or nine employees may be on their spouse's plan. They might have already had their individual plan. But when health care reform kicks in with the exchange in January, some of those employees may want to come onto the employer plan. And so we have situations where eight, nine, 10 employees are coming back onto the employer's plan in, in 2014, and they will need to contribute the same amount 
for those employees as they have their current employees, and are they ready for that on a budget standpoint? So uh, there's ways to uh, facilitate to the best of the employer's position with the type of plan that you offer and the contributions that you offer to either help facilitate the employees coming on or to put the employees in a position where they can go into the exchange and get a subsidy and not be disqualified by the contributions that you give them. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, uh, business owners out there that are watching this and they may have a lot of questions to ask you, but one thing, uh, what, what does an employer need to be doing right now? Well, they need to be having that consultation with their agency. Uh, webinars and seminars, uh, we have found that they've raised more questions than answers that they give and uh, has caused maybe even more confusion. And uh, these compliance paperwork issues apply to all businesses, large and small. And so we just simply recommend that you sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting with your agent and so they can evaluate your specific situation, the salaries of your employees, the contributions that you make, the type of plan that you offer so that you're in the best position starting in January for healthcare reform. Okay, great information, good, good, good answers and I'm sure that um, a lot of you out there may have more questions and if you do, check out the website uh, for Mike's company at the end of this video along with his email and feel free to leave any comments below this video so we can continue this conversation online. That's all we have for this week. Until next time, take care.